Welcome 7 Days to Die modding fans, this is Zith, and today we're going to have the second chapter in the series on using the SDX tool to modify the 7 Days to Die game. In a previous chapter, the previous video, we covered how to set up the initial uh, SDX environment that involved getting a clean copy of 7 Days to Die and copying it into a working folder, and that working folder will be the target of the SDX tool. So let's go ahead and get started. On the screen, you'll, we're back to the website again, and we are on the next section under the SDX Launcher. This section explains the Launcher screen itself and what you will see and what the buttons do, and a little bit about understanding how an SDX mod is set up. So let's get started with that. First of all, you want to go ahead, I'll scroll down, you want to go ahead and run the SDX Launcher tool. So how do you do that? Well, the SDX Launcher tool is in a directory that we created yes, in the previous video called uh, SDX Modding and a subfolder called SDX 0.7.1 and the very specific file, the executable file that launches that um, tool is SDX 7DTD.exe. So we can go ahead and, and get started and do that. So we'll bring up our file explorer in Windows and we'll go down to that directory, C, SDX modding, SDX 071, and the executable is right here. So we'll double click on that. It takes just a moment and then it pops up a copy of the SDX launcher tool. And so we're gonna talk a little bit about this I'm going to put this to the side for now because it's a little clearer on the main website. So let's talk a bit about the buttons here. The first button we're going to talk about is the settings button and you can get more information by clicking on the website here. So the settings button is important because it tells the application where to find your game. So to do that we want to go ahead and click on the button um, under settings to create the path to that file. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. So we click on settings and it po will pop up a path here. Um, in this case, I've already set this up. It moves to the working directory, but let's go ahead and do that. SDX modding directory is the directory again we created. The game is a subdirectory we created under that, which we put our two copies in. One, the clean install copy and the working directory, which is the one we want to modify, the copy we want to modify. So we want to click on that and then say OK. You also have the ability to make a new folder, but go ahead and set your folders up before you get to this point. So we'll click OK. It'll put that statement into the game directory, that path into the game directory, and then it's important to click Save to save that. So now 7 Days to Die knows where to find your game. The next button we want to talk about is the mods folder button. And I see here the mods folder is a, a um, where you, you're going to place when you make a new mod or you get a mod from somebody else, where you're going to dump that mod folder in so SDX can find it. And again, that is in a directory, same where we were, SDX modding, the SDX tool, but it's under a targets directory and the target seven days to die mods. That is, is the path. So when I bring the tool back here and I click on mods folder, it's going to open that path up automatically. Now the tool, that should be, will all be set up for you when you run the game. So here we have two mods built in, the block and the katana sample that's already in there. So next we want to talk about the play and the build buttons. The play and the build buttons are um, the buttons that you will be using the most. Once you do the setup, you don't have to mess with that again, but you'll be mashing the build and play button a lot as you're building SDX mods. There's a third button here called play with INI file. That's in for compatibility uh, with uh, 0.7.0 and previous versions. If you're making new mods, you won't be messing with that button whatsoever, but if you want to read more of it, you can read more about it, you can read here. The build button essentially, when you click that, it goes ahead and restores the assembly C# -sharp DLL, which is the main file for the Seven Days to Die game, and all those XML files from a local backup copy, if that exists. If it doesn't exist, say the first time that you run it, it'll make a backup copy of the Seven Days to Die assembly C# -sharp DLL from your game, 
and the XML files from that vanilla game. Put it in a backup folder for you. It then goes ahead and builds and merge any of the SDX mods that you have in that target directory and that you have enabled by clicking the box next to them. And it will copy the result of that build to your working directory folder, the working copy of the game where, where you can launch play from there. And again, the play button will launch the copy of Seven Days to Die that is located in the working folder. The next tab is the mods and output tab. And so let's go ahead and uh, take a quick look at that. The output tab, I mean the mods tab, is where you can click on and off the different mods. So you might have 20, 30 mods in your um, target mod folder, but you might only want to use a couple of them for a particular version of the game that you want to build. So you can have all the mods you want in there and then just select the only select the ones that you want the SDX to push into the vanilla copy of Seven Days to Die. The output tab is when you hit build is what actually happens behind the scenes in the tool to patch your game. Um, you will see different color events in here. Um, if you see warnings here that are in orange, it's nothing to worry about. It's normal for the game. Um, gray is simply information that is providing you. The green is successfully begun and completed tasks. And then black is just, again, information uh, about the output and results. So th this is basically a log file that it's, it's showing you. The next tab here is understanding the SDX mod. Um, when you click on the mods folder, it will bring up a, um, the actual inside of a mod. So you have two mods. And when you click on the Katana sample, for example, here, there's other subdirectories, other folders in that that have particular um, items that SDX needs to modify your, your files. Now, I'm not going to go into that. You can read this in some detail. Um, Sphere 2 did a real good job of describing each one, what's in the mod XML, what's in the config folder, the each config file. And we'll be covering that a little more when we actually go and, and run the uh, tutorials on each of these. But you see, this is, it gives you a little idea of what's in each of those folders. So that's how you get started with the SDX launcher. And the next, um, next segment is going to cover the beginners. And uh, the beginners tutorial will show you how to get that uh, a cube into the game and a katana into the game. And so uh, we will see you in the next episode.